So it's a fairly nice day outside today, so I decided to uh, try and experiment with this loop on the ground antenna that I've been reading about on the internet. Victor Echo 6 Whiskey Golf Mic. Thank you, you are about 5'5 five five into Alberta. So I've taken and cut the uh, a chunk of uh, 14 gauge stranded, it's just household electrical wiring and it's a 60 foot length and I've marked a white band every 15 feet we need to make a 15 foot square. And I'm going to try and uh, mark out that square using the nails into the uh, in the ground here. And then what I want to do is, is use the Nano VNA to measure the impedance of the loop on the ground without an impedance transformer connected. So the ground here in Canada is still actually frozen, even though it's above freezing temperatures today. And you can see I've had to pound the nail in, and here is the square. point. Don't think so I've got the Nano VNA connected here and I've gone ahead and calibrated so that this is the reference plane. Yes, I'm back to using my handy dandy alligator clips. It works for what we're doing here. So let's take a look here. At uh, 80 meters it looks like we are in around 350 ohms approximately. So Let's go up to 40. And we're in around 317 ohms resistive. Of course, there is reactance here, so we're not purely resistive, but this is not a resonant antenna. So based on the readings taken outside with the Nano VNA, I decided to do a few calculations here. And I've, uh, well, with the impedance on the loop of about 3 to 320, 350 ohms, and uh, using a 50 ohm coaxial cable, um, after doing a little bit of math here, I've discovered that uh, two turns on the primary and about five turns on the secondary. Of course, we have to have this a, um, an integer value. It can't be 1.25 or 4.9 turns, right? So I'm going to wind another transformer that's going to have two turns on the primary and five turns on the secondary and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm using the ferrite part number 287-3000202 ferrite core. I believe they're called a binocular core. Ordered a, a bag from DigiKey. It was actually fairly inexpensive. There were maybe two dollars a core and that's what they look like I've already gone and wrapped the first side so this is the primary uh, two turns and I've taken a pen and labeled so I don't forget which side is which because I need the five turns to come out the opposite side so probably can't see it but I did label that you can see it at the right angle it says two turns there so I've gone ahead and cut another chunk of the 28 gauge magnet wire that I'm using here. Got that off of Amazon. We're going to need five turns the opposite way. So we'll see what happens here. There's one. Okay. So two turns on this side, five on this side. We'll just take and nip this off here. And I'm going to mark it as 5T on the other side so I don't forget what is what. And on the other side, I'm going to mark a 7-3 for best wishes. <laughs> now, that's the type of core it is core material type 73 and 
I'm going to uh, prepare these lead ends so that I can attach it to the nano VNA and I want to measure the impedance transformation ratio of this transformer we just wound. So in order for us to be able to do anything with this wire, we're going to have to remove this coating that's on it. And in order to do that, we're going to use a torch. Simply burn it off. And that will allow us to solder to these wires. All right, once it's burnt off, use a little bit of emery cloth to clean up copper. That looks all right. All right, I'm going to grab a couple more items here and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've taken and put the transformer into my pan of ice here. What I'm going to do first is tin the wires. And I hear we've got a tuner upper on the frequency for our 80 meter net. So uh, it's a little after six o'clock. Usually it starts at about 6.30. So we're gonna probably be hearing some noises from the radio here in the background. All right, so I've got some solder on each of those leads. Now what I'm going to do is take and solder the two-turn side, which is going to be our 50-ohm side, to this SMA connector so I can simply take and plug that into the output of the Nano VNA. Use a little bit of solder flux. Help things along here. Of course, the polarity doesn't matter on this particular type of RF transformer. And there's one. And there's two. Now, on the other side, I'm going to take and uh, look in my kit to see if I have a resistor that approximates the value red, uh, the resistive component anyways, of the loop on the ground outside. All right, so I've found a 300 ohm resistor, which is, I don't know if you can see that or not, orange, black, and brown, which is three zero and a zero. We're gonna take that 300 ohm resistor and solder it to this side, and that'll be the load. So that's been attached, and now I'm going to take and use this nano VNA for this particular test, and I'm going to calibrate it right here with my open short and load. Okay, so I've completed using the open short and load to calibrate the nano VNA, and now I've plugged our transformer in with the 300 ohm load resistor, and we're looking at the display here. In particular, the frequency that I'm interested in examining is 3.7 megahertz. So I'm going to punch that in, in the 80 meter band. And the span, I'm going to put 1 megahertz either side. And we could even go maybe a little tighter than that. Let's go 500 kilohertz. There we go. So let's look here, 3.9 with the frequency here, 3.7 is what we're looking for. Okay, so at 3.7 megahertz, I'm seeing 43.6 ohms out with a 300 ohm load. So let's uh, just make a note of that ratio here. So tested. 300 ohms to 
ohms so that's pretty close in the ratio okay so according to the measurements we have a 6.9 to 1 impedance transformation ratio on this transformer here so I'm gonna go ahead and build this into an enclosure that I can put outside and hook the wires up to it and I'll show you that in just one second so this is what the finished item looks like we've used a little piece of PVC pipe from the local hardware store and a couple of end caps on the end I've got some banana jacks here and it seems like the dog wants to come visit so you might hear some dog sounds in the background earlier he was on the floor snoring so this is where I've soldered the transformer in and if you can see it inside there there is the binocular core and the transformer soldered in to place Okay, so I found a bit of noise here on 80 meters, and uh, you can see we're reading about S9 noise level here, noise floor. This is straight in from the 80 meter dipole antenna. I'm gonna switch over to the loop on the ground. Good. So we got pretty decent band conditions tonight and very low noise for my location. This is the loop on the ground and Tina listening to right now. And this is the 80 meter dipole. Do we have any net bulletins or announcements this evening? Dipole. Echo, echo, wouldn't be able to prove it by me, Go ahead. Loop on the ground. So over the past few weeks, I've been comparing the loop on the ground antenna to my 80 meter dipole. And what I've been finding is that the, um, as the videos you've just seen, showed um, the loop on the ground actually seems like more of a noise magnet than something that's useful for low noise receive so given that um, information what i've done is i've taken and used it that loop on the ground antenna as the feed side the noise input side for an x phase type noise counselor this is the chinese clone version um, for, for the noise counselor and believe it or not it actually seems to do a really good job let me show you so we've got our power line noise back and this is connected to the dipole antenna this is the loop on the ground with the 5 to 1 transformer this is what the loop on the ground phased against the dipole this is the gain of the loop on the ground adjustment. If I have it too far one way or the other, you can see that the noise comes back. If I find that null point, I'm adjusting the phase. There it is. So that's with the QRM eliminator disabled. And I'll dial it in. Well, after having tried this loop on the ground antenna for quite some time and discovering at my location anyhow that it appears to be a noise magnet more than it is something to use for uh, um, a low noise receive antenna. I'm wondering how many other people that have watched my video have tried this antenna and um, curious to know what kind of results you've seen. I know uh, I found quite a few videos on the internet uh, about this particular antenna and most of them are quite positive towards the um, low noise 
uh, characteristic of this antenna, but at my particular location, it um, it's works much better as the noise input to a noise counselor to uh, be able to phase out noise from my dipole. Well, this is Victor Echo 6, Whiskey Oscar, saying 7-3, and thanks for watching.